the thing that makes people different that are successful is they're so laser focused and relentless about what they do. It don't matter if they win or the losing, they're gonna just keep going. And they're not gonna stop. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Coach O What's going on, everyone? All right, bro, come on, come on, bro. Come on, hold it in your hand, man. Hold the drink in your hand. I'm putting his drink on stage, you know. He's like, oh, this must be VIP table. How you not do? You don't look good, man. Yeah, soap and water, man. Soap and water. So, uh, thank you very much for coming here. This is uh, a show that is dedicated to my mother. So, we are... We're gonna have a good time tonight. I see certain man in there just got released. <laughs> My kind of people, you know? Come on! Yeah, 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 there you go. How you doing, you right? All right, yeah, white and late. That's new. That's new, you are definitely from the ends. <laughs> good to be here, man, good to be here. I miss you guys, man. I've been uh, in LA. Uh, I moved there in January, man. Yeah, I, yeah. So some people are like, I didn't even know what's been going on. So that's how that's how much people miss me. But um, yeah, I've been in LA, man, and it's been it's been interesting. It's been interesting. It's a good time. The weather's great. You know, I'm getting that motivation again. You know what I mean? Like waking up to cold. No, not me. I'm tired of that, man. I'm tired. I got tired of just waking up to cold. Because you look outside the window, it just changed your whole plans, man. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's why a lot of people ain't been gym. You know what I mean? You look out the window, you're like, oh, yeah, I'll be fat. I'll be fat. It's cool. Fat and warm. Enjoying it out there. I'm enjoying it out there. I'm having a good time, man. Uh, this year has been crazy for me. Um, career's really, really taken off. There's a lot of exciting things happening um, that God is blessing me with. But at the same time, when you go through blessings of your career, sometimes it's the personal. It's still the personal, do you know what I mean? And dealing with grief is something that I've had to do with like friends and stuff like that. But when it's your mum, it's a whole nother situation, do you know what I mean? So feel free to laugh at anything I say. Um, I'm at a place now where I can share this stories with you, all right? So I don't want it to be too serious in here. All right, everybody good with that? Yeah. All right, <laughs> some people are like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I'm ready to bust up, lad, you know what I mean? <laughs> I came back to London yesterday. I came back to London yesterday, right? So let me tell you, though, some of you lot might know because you follow me online, uh, my shoulder here is fucked. Dave, I don't know, David Hayes in the building. Dave, you heard your shoulder before? Yeah, Brother, oh yeah, that was his excuses. <laughs> bro, I, bro, so, so my shoulder right now, I've been on painkillers for like 48 hours, um, to, well, 24 hours actually, um, and, um, and basically, um, basically I, was, I got injured on Thursday, and then um, my flight was Saturday, but it didn't start hurting until Friday, my shoulder, right? I'm gonna tell you what happened, don't worry, right? And then I was like, shit, I'm in America, my shoulder's hurt, and I said, I am not going to no healthcare in America. <laughs> Brother, they'll give you a bill, bruv. That shit will cost so much, I'm like, man, keep the arm, blood. Keep the arm, fuck the arm, blood. Who needs two, who needs two? Do you know what I mean? I can still cuss you out with this one. You know what I mean? Like, cause that, that American healthcare is different, blood. What? I, I landed back in London. I was like, clap for the NHS. Like, <laughs> clap for these motherfuckers. <laughs> clap for this free shit. Like you, listen, you better be careful what you complain about. Yeah, trust me. You go to America, bro. They let you die. Do you know, like, if you call the ambulance, you gotta pay five hundred dollars. If you call the ambulance and they leave. 
<laughs> you gotta pay five hundred dollars, blood. I know black people will fix themselves quick, blood. <laughs> what? what? Nah, I'm blessed, blood. I'm blessed. <laughs> Cause black people, man, we are doctors before we go and see doctor. Let's keep it real. We go. We don't go doctor. We go Google, blood. Yeah, to be fair, I don't go Google no more. Google's fuckery, blood. You type in your little symptoms, but Google's like, you should be dead. I went on YouTube, man, I went on YouTube, and then they asked me to do all these exercises with my shoulder, and I couldn't do none of them, brother. I was like, man, yeah, man, my shoulder's fucked. So right now, I'm on painkillers. I'm on painkillers and the blood of Jesus. <laughs> so we are gonna get through this show, amen? Amen. Yeah. Ah, right, so let me tell you how this shit happened. <laughs> so has anybody ever had to break into their own house? <laughs> Black people, come on, come on, come on. Come on, yeah, we're family tonight, we're family. We can be honest, all right, yeah? No, no me too's, no me too's, no, no. I had to break into my own shit, right? So um, I'm in LA, I live like there, like in Hollywood, so I'm like off Melrose, yeah? And, I'm, and, I, and I'm, I'm my, I have a balcony and I'm on um, uh, the first floor. So there's a laundry room. I, went, I was coming to London, and we're gonna do my laundry, right? I leave, I have a door that doesn't lock when you close it. You know those doors? Yeah, you gotta lock it yourself so I can't get locked out. So basically, I went to the laundry room, I come back to my apartment and the doors are locked. I'm like, wait, did I, did I lock it with my own key? So I know I left my key inside and I left my phone inside. So why would I have locked it? So I said, shit, did I lose my key or something like that? And I was so in denial, I look, I stepped back, I was like, this is my house. <laughs> That's how confused I was, bro. I'm like, do I live here? Like, Yes, you do, idiot. <laughs> so then I'm, and I've got a roommate. I've got a roommate, Roger. Roger's the kind of person that when Roger says I'm out, he out. He out. <laughs> you don't see Roger for a couple days, bro. Roger just come in and out of his room. He might use the kitchen once, but he's so quiet and to himself. I don't know what he does in that room. I, I, I just refuse to go in there, though. I, got, I don't know, but he spends a lot of time in Roger. spends a lot of time in his room. But Roger would leave, and you won't see him for like a week. Yeah, and he'd be like, you call him, like, bro, where are you? I'm in Japan. Like, how the fuck you get into Japan? <laughs> like, when Roger leaves, he's gone, yeah? So I'm like, brother, Roger locked the fucking door. Yeah, he must have locked the door because I know that I didn't have my key, my key's inside, my phone's inside, so now I'm going, bring, 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 bring. I got the kind of doorbell that wake up the whole fucking area, yeah? So I'm bring, 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 bring. No answer, no answer, I'm like, shit. And I know if Roger ain't at home, blood, he might be in Jamaica right now, blood. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. So now I'm like, shit, all my stuff's in there. I don't know when Roger's coming back. So I need my shit. So I go around the front, yeah? There's a skip. You know how big skips are, yeah? But when you got to break into your house, you will find the power and the strength. <laughs> you hear me? Uh, disclaimer, I have already fucked up this shoulder years ago. Yeah, I, and, and I've been a typical man, I ain't got to see, fix this yet. So I already know that, this is a problem, right? So right now, this one's healthy, fine. This is my bridging. So I go around the front, I move the skip. I move it, bro. There's a main road that's normally full of traffic. And this skip was like, oh, you want to test me, big man? Because as I'm trying to move it under my balcony so I can climb up, the skip's pushing me in the road. I'm like, pussy, oh. Back up, rude boy. So I, so I managed to move the skip underneath the, um, the, 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 uh, the balcony. Big broad daylight, it could have been someone else's teeth in, in my yard. No one come to check me or nothing, you know. I'm, get, I'm being allowed to break into my own shit. So anyway, I climb on top of the skip and the balcony is still a little bit high, the top of it, but I can grab the bottom, bro. And I'm telling you, yeah, you know when you're in a position where it's either you, it's either you climb up and pull yourself up or you die. <laughs> dramatic because it was like the first floor, do you know what I mean? But if I fell, I was gonna die of blood, do you know what I mean? So I have to tell myself that, bro, I found the strength of Jericho, you know? Like, I pulled myself up, I get to the top of the balcony, and I'm thinking to myself, shit, I'm at the top of the balcony. I try to open the door on the balcony, it's locked. So I'm flicking the lock, I'm flicking the lock. Guess who opened the fucking door? Blood Clark Roger. Like. Roger opened the fucking door, yeah. And I big man, I rang up the doorbell, bro. He said, yeah, man, 
mouthful you was gonna get. He don't come out his room for nothing, you know. Blood, I swear, blood. I can't wait for him to leave again. I, I'm, I'm gonna go in there and see what the fuck is in there, blood. Down there, man's got old semen and everything coming up in it. I've got dead bodies, you know. You don't know who you're living with these days. Um, so yes, yeah, so it's been good moving out there, man. Um, a lot of different things to kind of take into consideration. Like weather's great, as I said, weather's great. It motivates you. You get up early. Um, dating's hard in LA. LA is different, man. LA is where the tens are. Everybody's a ten. Everybody, well, not everybody. <laughs> yeah, I got carried away in that sunshine. Get to you. <laughs> there's a few that crept in. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, there's, there's, there's a few fives that like. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, there's a few plus ones. You know what I mean? You know the plus one. Some of you ain't laughing because that's you. you know, isn't it? Your name ain't never been on the guest list, is it? Just plus one. <laughs> there's a few of them in there, but it's beautiful city, man. But I tell you one thing that everybody's got until they make it. That, that's that's together. Everybody broke. LA is so expensive. LA is so expensive. Oh my gosh, I'm scared to open the door. Because every time I open the door, I get a notification from my bank that I've lost $100. That is how expensive it is. You look out the window, 50 pound gone. Bro, everybody in the LA stays at home. Yeah, and unless you got something to do, specifically. Women don't leave their house unless man getting them a Uber to Rascla. And the big car car. You can't drive to me. Mm -mm, you wanna see me? You pay. Like, fuck that blood. It's expensive. LA is so expensive. So expensive, man. And like, we, we, we think we're British. We think, yeah, man, it's cool when you're making pounds. If you're making pounds, even then it's not the same, remember? Remember when the pound was like double? Not anymore, blood. You change your money, you get a hug. <laughs> Shit ain't worth nothing no more, bro. <laughs> Fuck the pound, bro. The pound's dead. <laughs> I'm enjoying LA. I'm enjoying it, man. But the dating scene is tough, bro, man. Because American women are expensive, bro. Straight away, day one, I meet this girl, Chris. Ten. She was one of the tens. She was one of the, yeah. <laughs> She had a couple of twos with her, but you know. That's real friends. You can tell they're real friends. You know what I, mean? I don't trust all these groups of girls that go, everybody's Chris. They're not brethren, you know, they're just using each other. Yeah, man. You go to a wedding, you see some die dead bridesmaids, they're real friends, blood. <laughs> Let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> So, so now, so now, right, I'm like, okay, okay, I get it, it's expensive, but do you know what I mean, this is where I'm going to be for a little while, so let me see if I could, you know, maneuver around, meet some people, whatever. Uh, I meet this girl, man, beautiful, Chris, bro. I said to her, excuse me, you look beautiful, man, I'd love to take you out to eat sometime. And she said, okay, well, I hope you know we're going to Nobu. I was like, no, boo. <laughs> See that list that came out? In, yeah, that list that came out with all these restaurants that they saying they don't want to go to. What's fucked up is I was working towards that list. I wasn't even on that list yet. I was working towards the thing. Cheesecake Factory, someday. <laughs> but I fucking no boo. Take the boo out and it's no, bitch. <laughs> Bloody cheek. And, they, and that's what they do. And LA, they're strategic with the dating these women. They're fucking strategic. They go out there, they go shopping, they get their tea crisps and everything nice. Blah, 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 blah. Go check them at their yard and go, no furniture, blood. <laughs> None of them, these girls are beautiful, but ain't gonna shit in their yard. Talk about, I don't need a man. You need a man around here, blood. I might need to come and DIY something around here, bitch. I don't need no man. You look in their fridge, you see the back of the fridge. Excuse me? Excuse me. That's the kind of girl that if she becomes your woman. You say, I'm hungry. She says, me too. I'm like, what? Cook some. <laughs> Bullshit. It is tough, man.
man. You got to be somebody in LA. You've got to be somebody. Oh, if you ain't somebody, they they let you know you ain't nobody. Oh my gosh. You know when you leave a country where like, I'm known here. I get treated so much love and respect. But when I go out there, I ain't made a name for myself here. Oh, the disrespect is in your face. <laughs> Bro, have you ever had one of these? Excuse me. Like normally people say, excuse me, they just wait for you to move. They move you, blood. <laughs> yes, real people are coming through. Thank you very much. You go outside a club. If they don't know, it's me. I don't go nowhere no more unless I'm going with someone that's got status. Because I ain't there yet. Because in LA, they don't forget your face either, bruv. You didn't get in one time when you tried by yourself, bruv. <laughs> Even coming in with Jesus. No, Jesus, you're coming in, but he ain't coming through, bruv. He ain't good. He ain't good here. He ain't good. I've learned this, man. But it's amazing, like, you're walking around and you're seeing so much celebrities. People that you grew up watching, like, you know, and I've got an amazing team out there. I've got a great agent, I've got a great team out there, and they're putting me in positions where I can meet people. Like, I'm working with so many people that I grew up watching. Death Comedy Jam, uh, movies, do you know what I mean? And it's just, it's just amazing, but it's normalized. So sometimes when people come out their house, no one ain't making a fuss over them. You can tell who the, um, the, the, the locals are, because they walk past the celebrities, the foreigners. Oh my gosh, but they lose their mind, bruv. I see the game at the pest station, I was like. <laughs> I didn't even have a car, I'm just like. <laughs> bruv, I asked him for a picture, he said, nah, man, I ain't taking a picture. I was like, ah, oh, 50 cent, 50 cent, 50 cent. Fuck the game. And it's different, man. It's, it's racist out there. The racism's different out there. Uh, you know, I think the difference over here, between here and there, is over here, is st they stop your progress. You know what I mean? I think over here, they stop your progress. Over there, they kill you, blood. <laughs> Fuck progress, you got to go. <laughs> but people, and um, people are different, and the, the, the racism is contagious. It's contagious. I was at a comedy show, and this white guy comes to me and goes, man, you are fucking amazing, man. Oh my God, African shit and the British shit, that's my shit. And I'm like, you fucking amazing. Like, who's your favorite comic, man? Who's your favorite comic? I'm like, I love Bill Burr. Bill Burr is one of my favorite comedians. He said, what? Who, name another one, man. I'm like, uh, Ricky Gervais. I love Ricky Gervais, you know? He goes, man, why are you making this difficult? <laughs> you know what I mean. I said, what do you mean? He said, who's your favorite black comic, man? I said, bro, why didn't you just say that? I said, Dave Chappelle. He said, thank you. <laughs> Piss me off. I just left this fool, man. I jumped in my Uber, right? I'm driving home. This Asian man's driving me. And you can see that I was angry, yeah? He said, bro, what's wrong, man? I said, man, this dickhead in the comedy club started chatting shit, man. But fuck him anyway. I was like, yo, man, what's your name? He said, Jamie. I said, yeah, but what's your real name? <laughs> He said, Jamie, yeah, but what does your mum call you? He said, Jamie, I said, man, don't make this difficult. <laughs> what do they call you in China? He said, I don't know, I'm Korean. I was like, fuck you. <laughs> it's different out there, man. Different out there. Homeless people are different. You can smell them. Yeah, there's like a zone, you can smell them. Yeah, not going down there, man. And it's not like to shame them or anything because homelessness is different. It's not just like drugs or just what people think. Sometimes you, in LA, listen, LA is the only place in the world where you get a round of applause every year you stay there. Like, when people say how long they've been in LA, I've, I'm t I've never seen anything like it. They get a round of applause. Yo, I've been there eight years. Eight years, oh shit. Because it's a place you survive. No one lives there, they survive in LA. I'm telling you, you date someone, that's not a relationship, it's a survivorship. Because as far as I'm concerned, people, <laughs> LA is too expensive to find people unattractive. Pick somebody and split these bills, bitch. Do you know what I mean? You gonna find somebody, bro, cause they want that rent every month. I didn't know it was like, every month, every month. What I like about over there is a bit different though, cause they, they, um, first of the month, all the bills are in one. Not like over here. 
when they fuck with you, counter tax on this day, uh, light bill that day, energy like that. You can't go out for the month now because you, you don't know where. This in, confusion. Over there, everything, first of the month, bam, you're good. You understand? But they want it every month, bro. I was like, Rod, you don't want it every month. We don't get no holidays, no breaks. Every month, fucking hell. And them in LA, them 30 days come around quick, blood. You pay a rent, you go and pay the next one immediately. You're like, rot it! I ain't chat to no one, I ain't done nothing this month. It's been mad. I love it out there, man. It's, it's, uh, it's, the culture's different. You know, I'm starting to meet different people. Because I moved out there, right? Because I said to myself, I'm, I'm hardworking. I'm a hard-working person. I'm leaving the UK with a bit of like, you know, um, um, you know, I've got a CV, I've worked hard, and I'm coming out there, right? And I feel like my hard work, because I've worked with people like Chappelle, uh, uh, Chris Rock, Kevin Hart, they've all said to me, man, it's your time, you've got to come out here. You've got to come out here. We believe that you do so, so well out here. So I was like, you know, I'm going to go. And I took my hard-working self over to LA, and then I met the Mexicans. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my hard work ain't shit. <laughs> they work hard, bro. Oh, cause we don't get Mexicans out there. Our Mexicans are like the Polish. <laughs> Polish people, fuck it, hell, they love work. They love it. They wake up to work hard. Black people, are you hearing this? They wake up to work hard. They look for hard work. Give them something easy, excuse me, no. They want something hard. The Mexicans, I've seen them outside Home Depot. They're sitting at the back of the truck waiting to help somebody fix their fence, build a roof. I build a roof in two hours. They're looking for it. So that makes me want to know why they, why did white people take us? What was it about us that seemed like a good idea? 400 years could have been 400 days if he had taken the fucking right people. Mexicans were vexed when they heard black people got slavery. What? Why you give it to them? They don't deserve this shit. They want their money, man. America's, LA is about money. Success and money. People complain about how hard it is to date in LA and everything like that. It is difficult because people don't go to LA to build family and start all that shit. They go for money and success. That's why they're in LA. That's the prime reason why they're there. Ain't going to meet no one. That's why people date and they do whatever. But they, if you want to leave and start a family, you got to leave LA. Everywhere outside of LA, it's a higher percentage that you can meet someone decent, right? But LA is just money and, and, and success, and that is it. So single people make some noise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Summertime sounded different. <laughs> Summertime. <laughs> woo, 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 woo. Hot girl summer. Yeah. Mande, mande. <laughs> Sound hella loud in the summer, you know, big man. Winner come, boy. <laughs> You ever hug yourself, Kojo? You ever hug yourself? You ever spoon yourself, Kojo? <laughs> Let me tell you something about single people, yeah? Single people are single because they're waiting for somebody better than them. That's the truth. Everybody in here who's single, you're waiting for somebody better than you. That's the truth, right? But the thing is, <laughs> she said, amen. But sometimes you gotta say bullshit out loud. Why would someone better than you want you? <laughs> Let that marinate for a little while. Let that set in your system. Get into your spirit. Because you don't want no one that you're better than. You don't want no one like that. Yo, try and chat to a girl that knows she's better than you. I scares, man. I don't want to chat to you. But women especially, they want someone better than them. Right? But let me tell you something. Why would you want to do that? Why would you want to date someone that's better than you? All they're going to do is remind you of how fucked up you are. <laughs> on a daily basis. People, that is no way to live. 2024, I am done dating women better than me. Fuck that. I'm trying to find a woman that's got the same issues I have. I'm trying to meet a woman with allergies. Mm. Mm. 
I see a couple of them in the room. Mm. I can tell by how you're laughing. Mm. Real talk, man, fuck the bullshit. You date a woman with no allergies. Why do you keep making that noise? Shut up, man. Mm. I'm trying to find a woman with asthma, you hear me? Yeah, man. After sex, you ain't judging me. You need it too, bitch. You need it too. We can't breathe. You want round two? Hit this. Crazy. I am done, man. Find someone that's fucked up as you and shut the fuck up and chill, man. Looking for somebody better for what? <laughs> Anyone on dating apps? Make some noise if you're on dating apps. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Everyone in there chatting shit. They're chatting shit. Bro. You see what I'm saying? That's why, they, that's why they, 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 they're even lying about what they're doing. They're on dating apps. Let me tell you something. I found out that 95% of men swipe right. 95% of men swipe right. 15% of women swipe right. See that? No one ain't good enough for them. Yeah, they're not good enough for them because, you know, at this six foot thing, now I know there's a certain tall man in here. Big up your team. Big up you, man. But like, women, when they say six foot, like, they, I feel like they think that when, you, when God made you that height, it also comes with like a, a, a strong heart or something like that. Because I've seen six foot man get knocked out. Like. How, old, how tall was that brother, that the giant guy that you... Seven two, David punched him up. <laughs> and you know, still put six plus on your fucking dating app. Fuck dating apps. Dating apps to me are like, what's left? <laughs> oh, so see, see how, see how, nah, nah yeah. No, uh, no one was on dating apps a minute ago. But that's like, oh. It's true, it's, it's like, what's left, bro? You go there like, ugh. Uh. Uh, it's like when you go in the fridge. You know when you go in the fridge and there's nothing in there, but you just try and make a sandwich. You like? <laughs> okay, we've got a back of the bread, the back of the bread. We've got back of the bread, sardine, uh, a battery that somebody's trying to recharge. <laughs> Bro, you make a. <laughs> That's what dating apps are. They're like make a sandwich in the back of the bread, blood. <laughs> Yeah, you can still go and meet people in person. Social media has made us antisocial. Yeah, that's it, because anybody can be who they want to be when they're typing. You understand that? Some people can't ain't even spell check the shit and they're sending it. <laughs> Stop that shit. Yeah, especially with men, ladies, man. Let the man be in front of you and feel his pheromones. Yeah, it says get that masculine energy, man, because anybody can be whoever they want to be. Anybody can do all that stuff. But when they're in front of you, that's when you feel what's going on. You know what I mean? Eye contact. <laughs> you need that. You need to look a girl in her face and say, come here. I got plans for you. You chat to a girl like that. She'll come like she's the Highlander. Can't chat to girls nowadays. Can't chat to them nowadays. You know why? Because they came before they came to the club. Yeah, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. They, they already came. Bro, they've already come. All these sex toys that they're buying. <laughs> sex toys don't get no cramp. Sex toys don't get no backache. Sex toy don't hurt their shoulder. Sex toy ready, sex toy don't chat shit to them. Brother. <laughs> Cause back in the day, they weren't this sex toy thing. They weren't that, they weren't rapid like that. You chat to a girl, she's getting horny blood. Now she's like, and now what? <laughs> now I'm blessed, I looked after myself already. What can you do for me? <laughs> Girl chat to you like that, you're like, yeah, you came already. I can tell you came. <laughs> Kill them. Make me sick. 
There's a, there's a Disney excuse. Have you heard the Disney excuse? From the ladies, the Disney excuse. The Disney excuse is that, you know, they grew up watching Disney films, you know, and all the princesses were just waiting to get saved by Prince Charming. And Prince Charming was going to come get them and run away and save them and win them on the horse. And win them on the gun. This princess bullshit. Now, I'm going to say this. When white women use this excuse, I understand. You know why? Because all the princesses were white. Yeah, I don't know where black women are going, you know. The one princess we had was talking to a rascal like frog. Doing juju. Let's speak on it. And it made me think that why can't black women be fucking princesses? You understand what I'm trying to say? It's fuckery. Imagine Snow White being black, walking around with seven little grown men. We won't let her get away with that, man. She'd be a whole blood. You're nasty girl, dirty girl. Dirty white. That's what you call it, not snow, dirty white. <laughs> Imagine sleeping beauty if she was black blood. You think black women can sleep that long blood? Without people saying, yeah, that's that weed and Hennessy. That's what that is, that's weed and Hennessy. No, that ain't no spell. I know a spell, that's weed and Hennessy right there. Cinderella being black. What black girl you know is leaving the club before midnight, bruh? And leaving her shoe at the club. Unless there's some cheap shoes, that ain't happening. And I know some of you saying, yeah, but the little mermaid, nah, man, I, I want to see the audition tape. Because I know we had a new black mermaid and you know, was feeling yourself and you know, people sitting down. And... One black mermaid, all the girl in like... I want to see the audition tape, man. I don't know how she got the role. You know what I mean? Black women near water. Uh, I ain't seen no, no bonnet, no shower cap, no life jacket. Nothing. She must have auditioned on dry land blood. <laughs> Americans are different, man. They love Top Boy out there, you know? Oh my gosh, man. They love Top Boy. All these hood niggas came up to me, but yo, man, you from London, my nigga, man. Oh, yo, you watch that Top Boy shit? You watch that Top Boy shit? This guy came up to me. This is ignorance of some of the Americans, man. He came up to me and goes, yo, man, I've been over to London, yo. I, hey, yo, London was lit, yo. I went over there. I said, which part? He said, Amsterdam, nigga. <laughs> We gotta work on them. We got still gotta work on them. This nigga said Amsterdam, nigga. <laughs> Any religious people in the house making noise? Any Jehovah's Witness in the house? Let's talk about them. I've had enough. I've had enough. I'm sure I can speak on everyone's behalf when I say we are tired. We're tired, enough's enough. Cause they don't give up, man. They just, cause, bro, I didn't know they had him in America, you know. This woman found me, bro. She found me. They're knocking on hotel doors now. They don't give a fuck. Just as long as there's a door there, bro, they're gonna knock it, bro. And they're relentless. They don't give up, man. Just be at your front door, man. What kind of religion makes you hide in your own house? <laughs> they knock in the door, you're like, shit! <laughs> my dad cannot stand Jehovah's Witness. He hates them. Oh, my dad is an African man, but he hates them. Cannot stand them. <laughs> they knock the door, man. It turns into a military operation. <laughs> my dad, they knock the door. My dad's like, get down. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up, they can hear you. <laughs> Shut up, they can, they can hear you. They are everywhere. <laughs> Shut up, don't move. I'm like, Dad, the door's closed. Shut up. <laughs> they can hear you. They were knocking the door for five minutes. The only religion I know that do that shit. Knock your door for five minutes. My dad had enough, he answered the door naked.
Yeah, boy, they, they became Muslim. <laughs> so fuck this shit. He changed our mind. Where the Muslims at? Muslims make some noise? Come on. Yeah, man, don't fuck around with Muslims, boy. They're serious. That's a serious religion, man. They get together. You say one thing about them, they get together. That's a religion I respect. They don't take no bullshit. Don't give a fuck what the world's doing. Not over here. All I say is be Muslim all the time. No lunch breaks, no days off. I need consistency. I'm on a flight from LA heading back home to London. I'm sitting next to this beautiful Muslim woman. Now clearly it's her first time on the plane. As soon as the turbulence hit, she grabbed me. She was like, Jesus Christ. I was like, hang on. Ah, who are you gonna call? You find out what people believe when they're scared, blood. That's when the truth come out. Where the Christians at? Christians make some noise? Come on, the backsliders in the house. Christians ain't shit, man. Christians ain't shit. We ain't Christian. Christianity is the most disrespected religion. It's the most disrespected because we're not consistent. We change our mind. We believe the Bible says one thing, but this now we're like, yeah, yeah, let them true, man. Let them true. Come as you are. Right? But, but, but they don't, we don't, we, we change our mind a lot as Christians, man. We change our mind a lot. And like, Christians are the only people that I know that cuss on the way to church. Christians, what? Cuss on the way into church? This shit better not take too long, you know. I got shit to do, I'm going brunch after this, yeah? Don't fuck up my brunch, Jesus. Our job as Christians is to invite people to church. That's what we're supposed to do. Our job as good Christians is to invite people to church. That's our number one thing. Bring them to church. But how can you do that when you don't know what time church finish? <laughs> My, I got busy friends. They need a timetable. They need, they need details. And for years I used to blame the pastor at black churches, right? Because I thought he was the reason why service was going on for so long. But it's not him, it's the choir. <laughs> what song you know has 15 choruses? <laughs> I've been to white church. I've seen songs of praise. They sing the same songs as we do, but they sing them fast. They've got shit to do. Higher, 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 higher. Lift Jesus higher. Black people, we'll sing the same song. I said, hi. <laughs> How long we gonna be here? <laughs> Church going on so long, man. I'm like, I'm going to hell, man. Let me go to hell, man. <laughs> hell must be quick. <laughs> My dad, man. My dad is just like, he's tough. But he's tough because he, he grew up tough. Sometimes we don't know why our parents are so tough. But as you get to speak to them a little bit more, you hear their story. Do you know what I mean? A lot of them went through so much like mental abuse, especially African parents. They didn't get the chance to open up. <laughs> Tell that to African dad, dad, open up, man. What is that? Is that gay? <laughs> open what? <laughs> My dad didn't believe that children should play. <laughs> fun? You weren't allowed to have fun if my dad was awake. He'd be at home sitting down, right? in the front room watching television and if he heard people having fun he would lose it <laughs> we'll be in the neighborhood playing and my dad was like do 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 who the fuck is having fun <laughs> who the fuck is having fun my dad would come outside guys you ever been called in by your parents you know we're like you know when you're playing in the neighborhood right you're 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 enjoying yourself right and it's you know you're, 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 you know what it is you're enjoying yourself doing nothing because you ain't really doing shit, right? But especially, I grew up in Hackney, yeah? Oh, our games were like ghetto. We knew that our games had rules, but people just disrespected the rules. Like, who used to play runouts? Anybody used to play runouts? Blood, don't play that in my estate, bro. <laughs> Sam and I would leave and they'll go West End, blood. <laughs> but they leave a clean go at the manor, you know? You had the, the pole like this. <laughs> Waiting for them to come back. Man's gone off the end, blood. <laughs> Hey, coming back to <laughs> coming back to the pole. Oh, bro, man, but it was tough. My dad, right? I remember we was playing in the back, playing football, and my dad called me. He's like, "Kojo, come here." I was like, "You ever get so angry, start cussing under your breath?" I know, you know, you start cussing under your breath. You're like, "What the fuck do they want?" And my dad called me. I was like, "For fuck's sake, man! Damn this shit! 
Why does he keep fucking with me? I'm 11 years old, losing my mind, you know? Dickhead, blood. Using all my calf muscle, you know? This guy's a fucking prick. Every day! You're getting it out, because you know you can't tell them, you get me? What the fuck is this? I was, I was ridiculous, I was wishing all kind of shit on my dad, you know? Jesus, take him today! Enough is enough! He's got to go today. I was specific, break his left knee. And his right toe. He's got to go. Tired of shit. My friend Michael calmed me down. Michael's the only person I weren't afraid of my dad. Coach, relax, bro. He relax. Enough is enough. You gotta say something. Coach, you gotta say something. Your dad's taking a piss. You're a big man. You're 11. <laughs> Kojo, you got rights. <laughs> Do I? <laughs> Bro. <laughs> I said to my dad, Dad, what's up? Go to the store and buy me a drink. And you're like, what the fuck? So I turned to my dad and said, Dad! <laughs> All right, Mike. Can you get it yourself? That's exactly what I heard. I felt like there was a crowd in front of me. Ladies and gentlemen, it was 1 p.m., but it got dark real quick. The pigeons weren't even flying anymore. They came down to warn me. Don't say that, bro! Let me tell you something, yeah? When you disrespect African parents, right, there's three stages. First thing they do is they start laughing. Cause they can't believe how crazy you must be. My dad heard my bullshit, he was like, <laughs> come and see this, come and see this, come and see this. <laughs> okay, so you want to die. You want to die. The second thing my dad does, right, he breaks down the disrespect because again, he has to register this. So let me get this straight. I am the father. F-A-D-A. <laughs> the father. The father asked the son to go to the store and buy me a drink. The son replied to the father who created him and said I should get it myself. Jesus, can you believe it? <laughs> Guys, I woke up in the hospital fucked up. <laughs> I used to be light skin. This is a bruise. <laughs> go, what? My dad's different, my dad's different. You know, the only thing that we used to do together, right? Cause my dad was kind of like alone. He's kind of like in by himself, you know? Um, the only thing that we used to do together was watch horror movies. Uh, anyone horror movie fans? Yeah. We used to watch horror movies, man. But my dad couldn't just watch the horror movie. He felt like he was part of the shit. Like, do you know what I mean? He couldn't understand why black people were ever in horror movies. It's like, look, why, why are you there? You know they're going to kill you. Why are you there? <laughs> right? My dad took his soul thing, he put his interactive, he put his hand on his coat. I said, Dad, where are you going? I'm going to help him. I'm going to help him. He's a useless bastard. <laughs> Any horror movie fans in there? Any horror movie fans? What's your favorite horror movies? Nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> Elm Street. Insidious. Oh man, Insidious. That's my shit. That's my shit. Exorcist. With that white girl. <laughs> Twist up her neck and get possessed by the devil. Right? And I watched that a few times. When I was younger, I didn't really know what was going on. So I used to be right. I used to be one of the people. Horror movie come on. I'm like this on the television. <laughs> I'm surprised I didn't get possessed too. You get me? I'm right up there close watching horror movies, you know? But I always thought to myself with the exorcist. You notice that when the devil will take over somebody's body, it's always white people. You know, it's always white people. You know why? Because they got, they got things to take over. Yeah? When you take over a white body or a white person, you can go straight to killing because they're cool. You can't do that. That's why they don't possess us. Oh, they got too much shit to deal with. You possess black people. Oh, you got to pay child support. Four months rent. Yeah, I mean, bro. You, got, you, you can't even get to the killing, bro. You got things to do, bro. The, the devil will be in there like, let me out.
What I wanted to do was kill. Now I'm gonna pay council tax. I'm the oldest in my, my, my siblings, I'm the oldest. So like, when my mom passed away, it's like, it felt this. I've always kind of just been responsible anyway. I like to be the example. I like to try and be a, a good of an example as I can be. But like, I've literally become like the, the responsible person now. My mom's gone. I've got a very solid family. You know, my mom and my, my dad were both arrested when I was five. Yeah, and when you're in school, you feel like, when, you're, when your parents been in jail, bro, you feel like some sort of weight. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, yeah, people look at you like your scar face is you, blood. <laughs> you know what? Well, yeah, don't, don't mess with him, man. But his, his, his parents went pen. <laughs> nah, bro, I didn't get none of that weight, blood. I didn't get none of that, brother. I didn't get none of that. My parents went to jail for foolishness. <laughs> my mom was this innocent woman, man. My dad got her into it. She met my dad, he brought this shit to my mum, do you know what I mean? And then they had to go and serve a long time in prison. When you're five years old, a long time was actually three years. That's a long time, right? Because you change a lot when you're young, do you know what I mean? And you're missing some cool years. So they got locked up and then we got pushed into foster care, right? So we're in the foster system. Um, 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 it was under like Islington, but I was living in Hackney, I grew up in Hackney. And, um, and we, you know, my experience of being in foster care was beautiful because it wasn't stereotypical. Because normally, it's first thing you, see, you hear about kids moving around. There's no consistency in their life. And whether you are a parent who's gonna bring up your child or not, consistency is what children need. Sometimes people get into fostering and they feel like, oh, I can look after people for a couple of months. But you know the sad thing about that? If your experience is beautiful for them and they've got to leave, that's damaging as well. Because imagine moving around and all you're thinking about is wishing that you can go back to that house. Thank God, man. I knew God had a calling over my spirit because we stayed in the same place from five years old to 18. Do you understand? We practically was part of this family. A lot of my traits come from my aunt who raised me. I call her my aunt, my foster girl. I call her my aunt. She raised me. She was very integral. We're very similar in character. She taught me that you can do anything, try everything. You know, I, I played all kinds of sports. I was involved in drama school, everything. And I did everything. And, and I just knew that I could be whatever because she gave, she took us away, took us out of Hackney, which is needed. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, people in Hackney can't go to sleep unless they hear police siren. That's trauma. That's what that is. They go to a nice area, can't sleep until they hear whoop whoop. <laughs> That's better. But we grew up, we grew up with, with love. We grew up with love, man. My aunt really encouraged me. Um, she, she gave me my first $150 um, pounds because she was like, oh, yeah. I said, oh, I want to go and do comedy. I want to do comedy. She gave me, and I said to her, one day I'm going to pay you back, right? One day I'm going to pay you back. Do you know what I mean? And she gave me that, and that's how I got into comedy, right? And she supported me. And it was only when my mom passed that I learned more about her, which is a sad point. Because it's, it's sad that when we have to lose people, that's when all the information comes out. Because I'm telling you, you don't think you ain't got no siblings. <laughs> you think this it? Let somebody pass away, bro. You might have all tried to your cousin, you didn't even know. <laughs> I'm telling you, the truth comes out at funerals. The truth. And I know my family. Everybody's cool. I ain't heard no pasta, no beef, no nothing. My mom and her sisters used to argue back and forth, but that's what siblings do. Do you know what I mean? Now, let me tell you something about my, 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 my siblings now, right? There's, I've got two sisters. Yeah, I've got Anita and Namara. One of them has to cook. One of them loves to cook. <laughs> you know who you are in here as well. Yeah? Anita has to cook because she has children. <laughs> she don't like cooking shit, <laughs> yeah? And, and, um, and Namara loves to cook, and she cooks amazing food. She loves to cook. And Nita, when she calls me, she don't ask for nothing. Don't ask for nothing. Nita call me at any time. Any time Anita asks me something, she gets it straight away. Because she never asked me for nothing. She is somebody who's just responsible and handles her shit. She's got three boys, yeah? She's got Mateo, who hates me. <laughs> he hates me. He's the youngest one, and he hates me. He loves my son, but he hates me. If I walk into a room, he walks out. And I feel like I heard him say, fuck this guy. I'm saying that he said that. I'm, I'm sure he said that. I believe he said that. And, 
And you got Enzo. Enzo has autism. He has the kind of autism where he doesn't um, his vocal um, um, isn't isn't you know there. But he he but he speaks to me. And that's how it works sometimes. They just find someone that they connect with for whatever reason. And sometimes it might be just how I am with him, but he's like my favorite, you know what I mean? Beautiful boy. By the way, Anita is like, they're, all her kids are half Italian. And we knew this was coming. <laughs> oh, we knew this was coming. You got in her bedroom when she was a young, no Jodeci, no H-Town, nothing. Just all these men from Beverly Hills, 90210, blood. All these, just. Backstreet boys, fucking new kids on the block. What? Where's the mature? <laughs> Nothing, blood. We knew this was coming. <laughs> right? And then you got Nico. Nico's our oldest. Nico's just tall and he's got a big bottom. Yeah, Nico's just bottom, just, you got a woman bottom. I don't know. I just. But you call Nico, Nico walk over to you like this. Like. I don't want to be around when he grows up, but I don't call no grown man and he's walking to me like this, man. She wanted me to take them carnival. I said, I ain't taking Nico, blood. <laughs> Nico get around, fuck around, start twerking by accident. I ain't fucking with that shit, you get me? <laughs> I love Aeneas, kid. Then you got, then you got Namara. Now Namara, she's the black sheep. She's the, she's the one that she piss everybody off. Oh, Namara, Namara. She cook food so good, but she, every time she cook for you, she bring over food and you didn't ask for it. And you know she wants up. <laughs> so sometimes I don't even take the food no more. No, I ain't full, I'm full. <laughs> don't want it. Namara will call you, ask you for 400 pounds, just smooth. Nothing light, you know, she just start at the top. Yeah, yeah, can you give me 1500 please, huh? <laughs> she won't tell you what you need it for, just I need it. I need it, but you, you're supposed to, and she says borrow like she's ever going, she ain't giving back nothing. <laughs> Why do people just ask to take, can I have it? Don't, she asked to borrow it like it's coming back. She paid me back in food. <laughs> the youngest one's Daniel. Daniel, Daniel is like, this little beautiful black baby, Naomi Campbell, just model. She's got attitude, she's got ego, she got style. You put glasses on her, she wore like this. <laughs> Can't chat to Daniel, you get me? Daniel's too. Can't chat to her about nothing. Put glasses on her, she feel like she's the thing. Then you got Maya. Maya, yeah, I'm worried about Maya. I'm worried about Maya. Maya, Maya, she's growing up. She's growing up, man. Her body's just developing a bit too much, man. I know I'm gonna have to punch people up. I'm gonna have to punch people up, man. I know, man, I'm gonna be on her, bro. Do you know what I mean? I'm gonna, I, and she's very long. <laughs> Uncle Kojo, guess what this boy said to me? Shut up, man. Don't talk to no fucking boys. <laughs> boys are evil. You don't talk to none of them. Don't even talk to me. <laughs> Talking about no boys. Then you got Carl. Carl's ignorant. I hosted my first Christmas dinner. Right? Because I was like, you know what? I'm just, I have to be responsible. Like, this is where I'm at in my life. I need to bring everyone out around to mine. I hosted my first Christmas dinner. Had a great time, everyone's playing together, Mateo, my son Roman, everyone's having a good time, everything's great. Right, time to clean up. Time to clean up, everyone ate, everyone opened their presents. And when I buy gifts for my nephews, I, I, they love it, because I, I actually get what they want. I don't get them fuckery that I got. <laughs> brief. <laughs> Remember what the shit they used to get, brief. <laughs> Every year, brief, one brief. <laughs> Not even like the triple pack, yes. You, you always need one. Bro, I, I light them up, do you get me? Because I'm kind of, I know what kids want. So, you know, and I ask them what do they want as well, do you know what I mean? Because nothing better than getting what you want, right? So, so Carl always gets what he wants with me, always. So I ask him, you're, you're the oldest, everyone else is cleaning up. Everyone else is cleaning up, tidying up. You're the oldest one lying down, watching everybody work like Mexicans. <laughs> So I said to Carl, why are you not helping? Get up and help everybody else. Oh, oh, he's one of them. Oh. I said, what are you doing all that for? You're, you're the oldest one, you should be setting an example. Come and help everybody. Oh, I don't want to. And you can't say that to me. Because I would be like, okay, cool, you stay there. Stay there and just watch everyone. Don't move from that seat. And we all cleaned up around him. 
about 10 minutes later, he asked his mum if he could get a drink in my house. <laughs> His mom said, you gotta ask Uncle Kojo. <laughs> Straight away. <laughs> Can you ask him for me? So no, it's Uncle Kojo's house. You ask him to go into his fridge and, and, um, and, and ask for a drink. And she said, I'm sure he will say yes. And I was like, I don't know who you told her. Don't chat for me, don't chat for me. Jeremy, you already owe me money. Don't chat to me. Don't do that. It's my house. He could have come and asked me. Yeah? <laughs> she, she said, listen, if you go to Uncle Kojo and you apologize for not helping, yeah, I'm sure he will get you to come and um, he will allow you to have a, a drink. Comes up to me with attitude. <sighs> does this sound, does this look apologetic? <laughs> you remember when you wanted to go out and you asked your parents or something? You clean up the house, you did all kind of things before you asked. He come up here with his dry hand and ain't lift up nothing. <laughs> Uncle Kojo, can I get some drink, please? I said, I said no, you ain't, get, you ain't get no drink. You didn't help us clean. You didn't do nothing like that. Yeah? He goes, I'm sorry. <laughs> and that's not enough for me. What are you sorry for? Break it down. I want to know why you're sorry. Tell me why you're sorry. Because I'm sorry because I didn't help you clean. <laughs> <laughs> this is what they do when they're waiting for you to give them the green light. I said, okay, look, well, thank you for, thank you for your apology. Now go and sit back down. <gasps> and he was crying, crying, big, big you, taller than me, you know, crying. <laughs> Tall baby crying. <laughs> Every time he's doing that, his mouth was getting more white. <laughs> I mean, what he started to do here, yeah? he went up to the fridge. Oh! Oh! I don't know if he thought his tears were gonna open the fucking door. Oh! Oh! So sit down, you ain't get no drink. You ain't get no drink. You're rude, the house is already clean, and you didn't help us. And your mum owes me 2,000 pounds. <laughs> sit the fuck down. <laughs> Love my family. I've got two younger brothers as well. I've got Ben and Patrick. They're very close. My mum had them very, very close. They're very close. And Ben is six foot tall, handsome, very attractive boy. Every time you call him, every time he FaceTime, he's got a next gal in his bed. Patrick is very business savvy. Patrick was in charge of my mum's funeral. You know, sometimes in life, yeah, you might be the oldest, but sometimes when you're chosen, you, you, you're chosen for that role. Patrick was just leading it. And, and, and I'll, tell you, I'll share this with you guys. One of the things that happened, right, which happens at a lot of funerals, people tell me is that, you know, people always say to me, listen, bro, it's a funeral. Just try and keep your family together because there's going to be arguments. So what are you talking about, bro? My family, are you mad? Don't stand for none of that shit. No one ain't fighting. No one ain't doing no foolishness. We're going to go celebrate my mom's life. And no one's going to be that disrespectful to do that in my yard. Here come the Mara. <sighs> she still owe me money and now she want to do fuckery. <laughs> so in the Ghana tradition, when you lose your mother, the, the oldest sister becomes your new mum. Yeah? The oldest sister becomes your new mother. My Aunt Diana. My Aunt Diana is one of them Africans. She thinks she's, she thinks she's nine. She still thinks she's like 21, you know? Hey, sweetie. <laughs> Hey, silly. Are you in Los Angeles? You still in Los Angeles? She thinks she's lit, you know? I said, sit down, man. <laughs> Feeling herself. But she is like our new mother, right? Now, I'm cool with all my aunts. My aunts love me. I love them. They're cool. Mom had an argument with them, right? Before she passed, she wasn't all, all the way cool with them. But I look at it as the siblings. They argue. That's what happens, right? And what happens in funerals, people always tell you what somebody dead said when they were alive. <laughs> that's, that's when the devil start working. Because they ain't here to, you know, to, to kind of rectify that. You know what I mean? They just make, make it show. So tomorrow, go out there. And with, with our funeral, there was the elders. You know, this African tradition, they're not, it's just not no funeral where you just go and just go home. They, you got, there's a process. You know what I mean? They got to hand over the family to the, the, your aunt, right? Here come tomorrow. 
My mom don't want to have being our new mom. <laughs> he just jumped out in front of all the elders and embarrassed my aunt. Embarrassed my aunt. My son, my aunt's son jumped up and he went to attack Namara. <laughs> Big, I see WWE chairs, chairs getting fling around. I see people's wigs coming off blood. Hey, it was a mess. It was a mess. This was like three days after the whole thing. It was a mess. I was like, what the fuck is going on, man? What is going on? And this and it just ruined everything. And then people had to leave and it would just cause this big division in the family. And then I just had to I had to go around to my aunt's here yeah? and I had to apologize. And she said, no, 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 no. You could you did nothing wrong. Bring that one. <laughs> Bring that one. They weren't even naming her that one. Bring that one. So I had to come back, literally, I had to take my sister around to my aunt to apologize. And my sister, when she said it, she said it with chess. So now, here, yeah, I said, Namara, you fuck this up. <laughs> Just let them talk. I don't give a fuck if you agree with them. So don't fuck them. Don't fuck them. You already owe me 2,000 pounds. Your son didn't clean my house. Don't fuck this up. Just let them talk. I don't care. I don't care. They call you a bitch. You shut the fuck up. I'm just letting them fucking talk. Oh, Namara come out with some performance, you know? She's like, oh, auntie, auntie. Oh, all on her knees and all that shit. Because you got to get on your knees when you're saying, you can't be here. African women, you can't apologize on two feet, man. Like. <laughs> I don't think they forgave her, but they let her slide. You get me? But, but yeah, but it was tough, man. But I learned so much about, about my mum. I learned so much about my mum. I didn't know my mum was an actress, right? I, I've been carrying this whole career of mine and looking at my siblings, looking at my dad, looking at all these other people saying, where do I get this from? My mum never once told me she was in the arts. So when I found out and when my, my aunt told me, I cried. I cried so much because I was like, wow, like a piece of me that I felt was missing, it was there all the time. And I said to her, why didn't mom tell me this? She goes like, I don't know, because my mom was a big star. My mom would have all the kids run down. She was like on this big TV show in Ghana. And this is like when they had one channel blood. <laughs> and probably one TV in the town. You know what I mean? And everyone would watch it. And they would see her, they would run after her after school, they'd run after her. And I'm like, my mom's been in this business, my mom's creative, you know. And, and I just never knew where it came from. And to, to hear that when she's no longer here, I had so much questions. I, I, felt, I felt like frustrated. I was like, oh, this is mad. And then, you know, I was talking about, you know, my mom, my mom um, kind of like, you know, not being there for us and just growing up. And but what she did in that time, and this, she raised other people. And when we went to her memorial, right, that is when I saw the power of my mum's presence and I understood what purpose is. And we all have responsibilities to our children, but we also have purpose. And that's God-given, and you can't mess with that. Now, when you're a child, and when we were a child, we wanted our mother, but the truth is we didn't need her because where she left us was heaven. We was looked after, we was clothed, we was fed, we was, we was in nothing, there was no one harming us, we was good. My aunt raised some good kids. And my mum, when I was at a memorial, I sat there and I saw all these strangers share stories about my mum. And that's when I, it's like, I'd forgiven my mum, but I really forgave her when I was at the memorial because I understood that those people needed her more than we did. And as a child, it's very hard for you to understand that sometimes, yeah? But while your parents say, hey, I encourage all of you to speak to them. Ask them questions. Ask them questions. Ask them questions. You know, I spent 10 years not talking to my mother. 10 whole years not talking to my mum. And then, and then we patched up our, 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 our friendship and we became so close. She, she was every step of the way. She was there for my son Roman, contacting us. She lived in America. She never once met Roman in real life. And I was, I was going to take her to see him because, because of the pandemic as well. Right, because Roman was born 2018, and then it was like 2019 pandemic, you know? And then we was gonna take him in August to see her, and my mom passed away August 31st. Do you see what I'm trying to say? So, so I'm, I, I wanted to celebrate her because my mom did a lot. I understand that as a woman, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. And as a woman, don't, and, I, and just me being on the other side of it, you know, I never really appreciated 
a woman's journey. Because I'm not a woman. And, and I don't ever believe I truly will ever understand what you lot go through. But I understand that whatever you do, just think about the bigger picture. My mum delivered. In her absence, she left us an amazing home, 11 bedrooms. She looked after all of these kids. All of these kids, there's so much people that she raised. I went to Boston where she lived and a whole community of people came out for my mother. Her time and her absence away from us was not wasted. You see what I'm trying to say? Whatever you decide to do, man, bring home the fruit. Do you know what I mean? And I'm thankful God spared her life enough for us to see all the beauty that she did and she left when it was time for her to go. Guys, God bless you all. Thank you so much for coming out, man. I appreciate you all, real talk. Make some noise for my mom, man. I'll see you guys soon, man. God bless.